So now, as I said, um, I'm going to, as a bonus, we'll look at another cyclicality metric, uh, and it's called intercomponent cyclicality. And it comes from um, Java or .NET or strongly object-oriented languages. And there, um, it's now fairly well understood and accepted uh, amongst object-oriented programmers that we try to avoid cycles within packages. Well, when you're writing C and C++ code, uh, and especially if you are a strongly object-oriented programmer, then a very large part of your code is classes already. So could we focus on our classes and look and see what the intercomponent cyclicality is? Um, and so uh, and Latix will give you the tools to do that. Uh, there is a script in Latix called generate class view. So it'll take this um, project and from this project we'll extract all the classes and all the relationships which pertain just to classes. Uh, and in fact, in C and C++, you define a class in a header file, the implementation is typically in, in a different file, uh, and it will all combine it all together for you. Uh, so that you will get a single class oriented view. There won't be any source files or any header files, but it will all be classes. And I've already done that. So let's go to the navigator and let's load that project. So here it is. This is my object oriented project that I have loaded. Um, and we can actually um, look at the metrics here as well. As well. So let's close that. Um, and we can see. Uh, that the cyclicality of this is 38%, uh, but my main interest or our main interest today is to look at intercomponent cyclicality at this point, which is still pretty high. So that's very interesting that even though the cyclicality is 38%, 38% of the classes are in cycles, this says that 36% of the classes are in cycles that cross directory boundaries. Uh, but once again, we'll use the hierarchy to expand this further down. And there it is. That's where most of our source is in XJPL source. Uh, and then we go further down and we look at our live directory. And since com has a lot of our code, we are down to our com. And in fact, uh, look at our virtual terminal. And you can see once again, virtual terminal happens to be 15.3% or 15.4%. Now we'll go a little deeper in here and see uh, what we could do about those cycles. So let's take a look at, um, uh, at the project. So this is the project we are looking at, and that's virtual terminal client. Uh, so we'll expand virtual terminal client, and we can see once again that both of these are coupled together. And since they are in different directories, this is leading to intercomponent cyclicality being higher. So let's be refactor it in Linux right here. So we'll edit it and we'll say uh, delete subsystem retain children. So in effect, we're flattening it out so that now all of these are in one directory. And as a result, any cycles between them should not show up in intercomponent cyclicality because those cycles are all within that same directory. Uh, if you come down here, even though we made a change, it didn't change much. In fact, it, didn't, it changed virtually nothing. Uh, and so we look for the next thing. So what is it that our virtual terminal client uh, is in cycles with? And if you look at the top level, you can see that it's in cycle with something uh, in import. So if we go down to this particular dependency and we go to information pane, we can see that there are some method calls being made. And what's interesting here is that impl is a low-level uh, set of routines or a, a low-level subsystem, as we call it in Latin, and lots of things depend on it. So when you have something in impl uh, which has a dependency on virtual terminal, then as a result, you're now put, pulling up into cycles all kinds of things which might be in other subsystems. Uh, in fact, if we were to click on it, we'll see that there are two dependencies here, which are two method calls. And we can actually navigate to the point in source where that happened to be. And you can see that there is a method being called right from uh, a low level subsystem to an application called virtual terminal. And there are ways of eliminating that dependency through inversion of dependency and so on. 
but that's not our focus for right now but just to keep in mind that there are ways of eliminating these dependencies but now let's go back to um, uh, to our metrics tab and we're looking at 15.385 and now what i'm going to do is let's say that we eliminated that dependency so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to hide that dependency and again we're refactoring or we're changing the system now so i hide that dependency and i'm going to say yes assume that that dependency does not exist and now we're going to refactor we're going to look at the recomputation and notice what a tremendous drop in um, in the in how much we reduced uh, the intercomponent cyclicality the virtual terminal client doesn't contribute anything to intercomponent cyclicality and we reduced our intercomponent cyclicality by almost 15% and that's the beauty of being able to look at our system in its entirety along with in conjunction with metrics oftentimes it's a handful of dependencies which contribute to the erosion of the architecture which contribute to poor metrics uh, and what this does is it allows you to look at the metric and be able to correlate it to to the place in code which is causing that unwanted cyclicality and then you can see to get rid of it uh, how much how much uh, your metrics can improve and you can experiment with it and even identify which of the dependencies are the best ones uh, to improve my metric